There are a lot of mixed messages available on marijuana use, its harms, and legalization. Determining fact from fiction is not always easy. This video is part of an ATTC Network Coordinating Office multimedia package to provide you with straightforward, accurate information and resources from leading scientists and trusted sources to enhance how you address marijuana issues in your work. This is the third video in our Marijuana Lit series and discusses the effects that marijuana use has on pregnancy, newborns, and breastfeeding. My name is Laura Borgelt. I'm a PharmD. I'm a professor at the University of Colorado in the Skagg School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. With regards to marijuana use in pregnant and breastfeeding women, it's really important that we look at the science and evidence behind this information. Unfortunately, we don't have excellent quality research. However, we do have some good longitudinal trials that really help support some of the key messages that we're trying to send to women uh, who may be either currently using or might consider using in the future, especially if they are of reproductive age or, or breastfeeding their babies. And so kind of maybe just to start to tell the story, there were three longitudinal studies that have been conducted that we really look at as a gauge for the information that we have. Now, most of these studies started in the 70s or 80s. So when we look at these studies, the key areas where we find consistencies are really around the developing brain and different functions that the brain might have. Specifically, marijuana use in pregnant women has been associated with some a decreased functioning later on in the exposed offspring. So for example, as they become adolescents, what we tend to see fairly consistently is decreased academic ability, a decreased uh, attention uh, problems, and also um, decreased cognitive functioning. And these are obviously very important functions that we want not only adolescents to have, but also adults to have. And so I think one of the key messages that we really need to be sending out at this point in time until we can know more is that there really is no known safe amount of marijuana that a woman could use or should use. In addition to that, when we look at the breastfeeding literature, we really have very limited data when it comes to breastfeeding. We do know that the THC, the active ingredient in marijuana, does pass through into the breast milk um, and therefore will be getting to the baby. And in fact, it likes fatty areas, so it will go to fatty parts of the baby, including the brain. Um, and so there is a risk that there may be impact there that we don't know yet, um, particularly because the brain is still developing and forming in, the, in those uh, stages, whether in utero or throughout um, after the baby is you know, doing well and breastfeeding and all of those things, that there still is some brain development occurring, obviously, and so there could be some negative impact. Marijuana can stay in your body for quite some time, and depending upon the user, it can be days or weeks. Um, and so there ultimately can be impact to the fetus if a woman is pregnant and or the baby if she's breastfeeding. And that time frame of how long it stays in the body um, really depends on a lot of different factors, primarily how much the woman might be using. And so there really is no magic formula in terms of, you know, a pump and dump type of um, thing that we've often done with alcohol. It is not the same in terms of the way that it's metabolized and processed in the body. So we really, at this point, um, because there's so much unknown about that exact time frame, we really are recommending avoidance strategies as much as we can. So in terms of some of the results of these trials, we have seen some consistency from a birth outcome standpoint that there may be some decreased growth. Um, again, these are limited studies, there's just moderate evidence, but there may be a concern around growth in terms of an immediate birth outcome. Where we have greater concern actually comes later in life when these exposed offspring are in their adolescence. And things that we have seen across several of these studies consistently are attention problems, decreased academic ability, including a decreased IQ score, as well as cognitive function issues. And so these are obviously very important things that probably happened when the brain was developing in utero. And with that marijuana exposure, we're seeing these problems arise later on in life. Related to research gaps, there is a lot of information that we don't know. For example, we don't know about the different dosage forms. If someone is smoking or eating or vaporizing, what impact that may have. 
With regards to secondhand smoke, which is a question we often get, we do know that some of the toxic chemicals that are released from smoking are also released when smoking marijuana. However, we don't have data on secondhand exposure to marijuana and what impact that may have. Um, we also don't have a lot of information regarding the long-term effects with the current potencies of marijuana that are available. You know, when these longitudinal studies were originally done, the strength of marijuana was much less potent. And in fact, over the past 20 years, the potency of marijuana has gone up over 120%. And so with that, we have probably some potential for changing evidence and information. So we need to be aware that while we are relaying these messages and talking about these messages re with regards to the data that we have, there are, is a lot of research that we need to conduct and continue to observe in these especially vulnerable populations. I think when we look at research of this at this point in time, much of it will be observational. I think when we talk especially about women who are pregnant and breastfeeding, it almost has to be observational um, because to administer this in a purposeful way would be considered unethical. I think that um, many of our studies will have to be observational and hopefully we can do a better job recording the type of marijuana they are using, the potency of the marijuana, how frequently they are using it, and then ultimately the long-term impact that it may or may not have on the individuals that have used it. There is a belief, I think, among some marijuana users that it's a safe alternative, it's natural, it may be even herbal in some cases, but what I think is very important for people to understand is that marijuana is a drug, and it's a very powerful drug. It has the ability to absorb readily into the brain uh, and impact the way that we feel, and obviously when that's also happening with a fetus or an infant, where things are still developing and being formed, it's really important that we try to avoid that so that the processes were, that were intended to happen, happen, and we're not disrupting it in any way by using marijuana. The key message being that we do not want to encourage breastfeeding while using marijuana. Um, there's a lot of debate about what should we be recommending. I think it's a really complex and complicated question. At this point, we really want to be encouraging women to stop using marijuana um, if they are using it before they consider breastfeeding and potentially looking at alternatives such as formula as a way to go if they are unable to quit. One of the key factors as well is really how we as healthcare providers can be talking to our patients about marijuana use and, and what they are doing. One of the practices that we've adopted in our clinical practice is to ask how much alcohol do you drink, how much tobacco do you smoke, how much marijuana do you use, and what other illicit substances might you be using. And what this does is really open up in a how much frame, not are you or are you not. And when they say zero, that's fine, but it allows us to screen and identify those that may be at greatest risk. I would argue that not only pregnant and breastfeeding women are especially at risk, but women of reproductive age. We often um, find that women aren't aware that they may be becoming pregnant or may become pregnant or at risk for becoming pregnant. And so also sending messages to those who may become pregnant in the future is an important part of that message. So really screening and identifying patients who may be at risk becomes a very important part of our job. Stay tuned for the next video in this series, which describes the term medicinal marijuana, who uses it and why and the difference between medicinal marijuana and THC medications. If you have thoughts on this topic or would like to hear what others are saying, join the Network of Practice online discussion. Visit www.networkofpractice.org, create an account, and log on today. For more information, please visit the ATTC Network website, www.attcnetwork.org.